Hello and welcome to Twin Tigers Data. My name is Thomas Kissner and let's get started. Today I'm going to revisit on 10 easy and quick campaign ideas. Last time I did this, my video kind of turned out crap, so what do you do? Now, first off, Bartender's Rumors. This one is pretty easy to get your players started off on something. They want to find a quick adventure. Uh, oh, we kill some rats down in the basement. He's heard about that type of stuff. He's heard about monsters doing things or cults that are making moves, etc., etc. This is more of a side quest based adventure than having a real goal. Now, however, you can take turn this side quest based adventure into a real adventure by say like it says making the tavern involved with something sinister something evil or causing the information leak to show them somewhere to go that actually has more impact than the bartenders leading on next up you're hired now the town wants you to say protect them and is willing to pay you whatever you want within a certain limit. Reminder, towns don't have a lot of cash. Anyways, nobles want you to protect him and is willing to have you rewarded handsomely. Or an assassin's guild just wants you to do their dark deeds and want to keep their hands clean. Yeah. Essentially here, a group or a person wants you to do a thing uh, most of the time protect them from an evil group or an evil villain and they're willing to pay you whatever you want now you can make this into something bigger like uh you're hired to protect a caravan and all of a sudden the group the cult group that's attacking the caravan suddenly you realize is trying to resurrect tiamat say Okay, now you've got somewhere to go. You're captured. Your group is knocked out or arrested and taken to be held separately or together. And this can allow, if you hold them together, they can possibly bond a little bit. And if this is first level characters, which is really easy to capture and hold down a group with, you can really let them bond and start talking to each other. And they're left there for now. Now, you can leave the players there for a little bit or cause the, and allow them to revolt and attack the guards and escape and possibly become wanted fugitives, depending on whether it was a city or a, an occult group that captured them. Or have them be kept... Or the players decide that they want to be kept there until the rulers decide to do something with them. For example, uh, they're going to be sacrificed to demons, which is a possible choice. Or they serve their time that they are required for. Like they accidentally uh, stole some gold coins. They're left there for two days. You don't know your town's... Uh, just a system, you go ahead and do what you want for it. However, still, the players most of the time may want to say, I'm going to want to escape, I'm going to want to do this, or I'm going to want to try to make it out of here alive. Instead of saying, I want to be here until I die. Yeah, that's usually your suicidal character that you don't want. It's a fight. Your party is going along a road, and you just tell them the reason, whatever you, whatever the hell you want. Go ahead, be wild. And suddenly, enemies appear out of nowhere. Great way to, this is a great way to bond, especially since, uh, if you remember, Gimli and Legolas love to try to show who's better at killing orcs. And it's a great bonding experience because after a while, they start to become true friends due to it. And so the party can bond over this and realize, oh, we should probably investigate why the hell this group is fighting us. Now, you can allow for an evil and dark plot to come from these 
goblins that somehow are wearing, instead of leather armor, breastplate, and are carrying shield, and are play also carrying a plus one short sword for their size. Now, given this information, your, par your party now realize, oh damn, somebody is mobilizing the goblin forces, and may have also mobilized the hobgoblins, the bugbears, if I think 5th uh, edition has put those in. Uh, if you're running 3.5, you know that there's bugbears then. The orc uh, raiding groups as well is now being organized. You've got an army starting here. Oh no. We need to stop them before somebody says, oh shit, we're screwed. The overlord is looking to... You get the idea already, right? I mean, it's... Th there's a guy that wants to take over the world, wants to become the ruler of the entire world, and wants to destroy the destroy everything in their power. Usually this is not a player, however, sometimes it is, uh, because you're running maybe an evil campaign. However, this is overused how, uh, and is kind of drolled out. But use it, please. Please. I mean, it's always a good idea to have some guy that's looking to take power by the balls and use it to their advantage now usually these overlords are looking to gain power looking to take over the world by gaining an item or a relic or something similar by killing someone that is currently ruling by releasing a dark entity or enemy that will help them destroy the world or even by using their own power to just assimilate the entire world and everyone in it. And then just rebuilding from there. It's easy to get the party involved. And it's easy to get people into because, hey, this group is wanting to kill the world. We should probably stop them. Now, make the... Now, as the party is doing something, you should probably be make, having them make moves. For example, if they take a month-long trek to get from the town to a meeting that's happening, you could have maybe three or four small villages completely obliterated, burning with all the human bodies inside it, or all the villagers that were in those towns be dead and not living anymore. And that's an easy way to keep your party saying, oh shit, we need to do something. And not just be like, this guy's not really doing much. Why is he so dangerous, dude? Corrupted leaders. Now, I ran a campaign that has recently been restarted, if I can ever get a second day off. And this was pretty much our campaign idea before now. Now, there is someone that is ruling and is purposely allowing illegal deeds to happen, like the black market, or uh, they know that there's an assassin's guild that's killing off uh, innocent people and then selling the dead bodies to the occult group that's parked right outside in the forest that promises to, when they summon the demon lord uh, Bahamut, that they, sorry, not Bahamut, uh, Let's say the Demogorgon, they promise his safety as long as they are able to live and they keep any adventurers off of their backs. Now, sometimes, however, the ruler himself is not the person that is corrupt. The ruler may be being corrupted by another corrupted official. Say the king is being uh, mistreated and misled by his wife and being told that these five adventurers are truly the group of assassins that are trying to kill her and him in his sleep. Now, that could be a pretty good story if you ask me. But anyways, uh, there could be a demon that is really... There could be an angel according to him. However, really it's a demon and he's just using his ability to lie and cheat and steal to get his way into 
your king's mind and abuse his power. Or possibly the Assassin's Guild owes him a favor for not Welch for not going in on a deal that was made by another uh, high-ranking lord that wanted him killed and instead killed the guy out of their own belief. However, they want to get him to pay back, so he's making them not uh, send the guards after the Assassin's Guild just for that one time. Now, this is... Now, at times, you might want to remind your players, hey, we may not want to immediately attack these guys because they might have a big army. Uh, no one's able to take the their spot afterwards. I mean, they could have seven kids, however, all of them are corrupt, evil, and should be killed on sight. Or they can be more powerful than the guards and mercenaries that they've hired to protect them. Like, your players are level five or level five to ten. It's like tier two for fifth edition. And the main boss is tier three. And all the guys that they've been killing and slaughtering on the way up to him were about tier one uh, enemies. So you get the picture here. They're not high enough level to fight him. The guys that they've been fighting are too low leveled for, and easy for them to fight. However, the big guy is still above them. And not they're not ready unless they pull off the luckiest kill streak possible and win. Rename thyself. Now, this isn't like, oh, I'm just going to change my face, re give myself a different name, and we'll all be good. No, this is uh, looking to regain your honor because a corrupt leader, per se, or a corrupt official has charged you with a crime that you didn't commit. Now, you're looking to regain your honor that you have, and or this is just one of your players, and all of a sudden the rest of the party somehow just because they were seen talking to him in a tavern they are now all associated with the pl criminal player and is now being looked for to be killed uh is now wanted as well in this one they cannot go to the guards because now the guards are looking for them and want to collect on the bounty and always remember that sometimes just because a player is a criminal does not mean that they are responsible for the crime. The players could just be one of those people that are like, oh, I, uh, a bugbear really killed him. I was just there and the bugbear disappeared. As unlikely as that is to be believable, it's true. However, they could be... Uh, could, they could be believed to have done the crime just because of association. For example, uh, they're a tiefling, and all of a sudden, there's a whole bunch of demonic rituals around them, and there's a dead body in front of them. The guards show up, and they believe that this tiefling killed them because he was summoned, and he wanted to. And now he's in trouble, and the party is, that was involved with him is now also in trouble because of that. Now, some major adventures may work with this part, work the best for these people. For example, going to stop Tiamat in the book, in the adventure called uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen and also The Rise of Tiamat, which is also D&D 5th Edition's uh, Season 1 Tyranny of Dragons campaign. Doing this, you can probably get through that pretty easily and pretty fine. Treasure desired. Now, there's a, now, let's say that a nobleman is looking for this rare magical artifact that supposedly has the ability to ward off a vampire, a vampiric force that is coming to destroy them only. Your party has now been, your party has been asked to go get it, and they they are promised any treasure that they find 
along the way, and plus a, a few extra gold pieces, let's say. Now, that's one way of doing it. Another person, say a holy cleric, wants the dark sword that is supposedly powerful enough to slay good gods, which is actually uh, my world's way of saying, and this is in all of my editions, 3.5, 3, 4, 5, uh, my world's way of saying that's how you kill a god, which is my homebrew world. Uh, but anyways, they want this sword to be destroyed, and they tell your players that they, if they destroy it, they will have the respect and also maybe a portion of land for doing it, let's say. Now, most of the time, these items may be legendary. Uh, for example, they are intelligent. They can talk to you. They can emulate their emotions onto you. Or they are an item like, say, a sun sword that has the ability to also teleport you three times per day, uh, 30 feet in any direction, and reach charges 1d3 times uh, at every sunset. Or it can also just be a symbol of power that's like this wooden statue thing that a king carved once and now inspires uh, hope and peace amongst the entire town and it's absolutely worth value is like a copper piece. I am not kidding you. You could literally do that and the entire town could believe that this thing is really magical. All of a sudden you get it, you find it, you're like, this is worthless. Are you certain that this is the what the ruler wants? And the NPC that you brought along with you tells you, yes, that's what we want. Do not tell me that it's worthless. It is worth more than our entire tribes tribesmen's swords. Your pliers may be confused as hell, but it works, and if you're dealing with a bunch of Neanderthals or barbarians, that idea is going to work. Now this is a recruiting guild or caravan. Now you need to make the group interested. This is the legitimately how my DM uh, got me involved with it, and I actually used this idea last time on my last video. I was playing a drow rogue at the time, and the, what interested me was the fact that a full orc bard, this was 3-5, so you know that the orc should not be playing a bard in the first place. Not even a half orc should be playing a bard, but he was pulling it off. This full orc bard was intriguing me by to join his group just because he was saying that they accepted anybody. And the fact that this full orc bard was there made me want to do this so much more. Anyways, we also had a uh, half orc barbarian who barely spoke any English. However, he understood a few words, fighting, treasure, and death. And he was like, I want to go on this now. We also had a paladin that was crazier than hell, and also a wizard, I believe, in the party. I'm not completely certain. But uh, the party was, those two were convinced to join by the paladin saying, hey, uh, sorry, by the bard saying, we will be avenging the group, uh, avenging the world, and saving it from dangers and saving people. We will also be going into long-lost areas, possibly, to find uh, hidden treasures and untold secrets. Boom, wizard's on because he heard the words untold secrets, and the paladin was on right as soon as he heard saving world. However, the leader who is hyped on Love Root, which is Love Root is essentially a smoking uh, weed 
that uh, I always hate to describe this thing, but it essentially made it produced pheromones that made you want to do it more. And the leader had very sweaty palms. Damn that dwarf. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, with the three women inside the room with him. But anyways. <clears throat> like I said, the leader instead was actually working for a dark demon lord that was looking to enslave the world. Now, you can always just actually make the caravan or guild leader be legit and be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not working with anyone evil at all, actually. I'm working for myself. You can do that, and that works too. However, also, they can provide materials uh, for your characters and have them pay for credit or are just given at certain ranks. Like when my party was hired on, we were each given these things that were essentially flash bombs, I mean flash grenades, and they worked very well. The only problem was my drow, despite the fact that he looked away, had to also roll a fortitude save because his adaptivity to darkness was not that great until about, uh, I believe I put him at level Six, and then I finally said, all right, I need some night activity now. Finally, we have help Timmy. Now, you can set this up to be a trap. The fair lady is truly a demon. And she just wants the party so that then she can... Uh, so that then instead of saving a little kid, they become even more bodies to be sacrificed to uh, Orcus or some other evil dark god or one of this demon princes. They could actually be saving someone from being a sacrifice or just being the next meal for a troll, perhaps. But anyways, these work great for cults, uh, demons, or slave markets that are that are trying to sell the, these people to uh, wealthy landowners that don't care about where the slaves come from. And these make great reasons to go and help save Timmy. Now, the sewers or local cave systems, either organic or man-made, are usually where you're going to try to save Timmy. However, you can also go with an old uh, series of ruins from an ancient castle that is mostly in shambles now. Alright, so there's one slide missing from this, I'm sorry, but you should combine, your, combine these 10 ideas as much as you want. However, don't combine all 10. That is a bad idea. Severely. You don't want to have them go and save someone and also at the same time Go find a magical item, and also, uh, however, you can have those two be at the same time being hired by the town to go save a, them and grab the item. However, you want to try to, don't make it all one thing. Please, please don't, because that is just way too much. You don't want to confuse your players on this and make them just not want to come back. All right. That's all for today. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you just want to let people see my terrible videos, go ahead and share. My name's Twin Tiger. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Play safe.